Hello everybody. In this tutorial I'm going to guide you through how to create a 24 frames per second DCP from a 23.976 video source. Some of you might think that it's just to drag in your 23.976 footage into a 24 sequence. Um, yes, you could, but it has some drawbacks and I will give you a quick example of what's going on if you're doing that. I import a 23.976 uh, video source. I will create a 24 frames per second sequence. I'll make it flat, 1908 by 1080. As you can see, uh, my sequence is 24 frames per second and my video source is 23.976. I drag my video footage into my sequence. It gives me a warning because the video source has another frame rate than my sequence. So I keep existing settings. I don't want to change my sequence settings. I, w I want it to be 24 frames per second. And so what's happening when I drag a 23.976 video source into a 24 timeline? every thousand frame you have a duplicate frame so in this example my first two frames are duplicates I flip over to frames uh, and you can see this I'm on frame zero I go to frame one you can view it on my uh, burned in time code that nothing is changing when I'm jumping between the first and second frame but if I go to frame two you can see that we are progressing ahead. Uh, I'm jumping ahead to uh, 1000 frame and you can see um, on frame 1000 I'm on frame uh, 1001 and here you can see between 1001 and 1002 we have a duplicate frame. I step 1000 frames ahead again I go to 2001 and I'm using my arrow keys to progress forward and you can see here between frame 2002 and 2003 we also have a duplicate frame so this is not what you want so what are we going to do about it I have a 23.976 video source here I'm dragging it in here we have it I remove my example this is my 23.976 uh, video source. I'm going to change that. I'm going to tell Premiere to play it at 24 frames per second. Uh, take a look at the video duration. Now I make a duplicate on this one. Sorry. Okay. Now I have, I have two copies of the same source. I'm going to change this one to uh, 24 frames per second. I go to modify, interpret footage. I assume this frame rate is 24. This is my modified video source and this is my original one. And the thing that is going to happen is that duration is going to change. I'm lo actually losing 6 seconds. This means that the audio does not fit so we need to do something about that. First let's create a sequence. I'm using this one, I'm using the Arri preset and I'm changing it to 1998 by 1080 and I'm adding some audio tracks as well you think you have seen these things before I'm going to the multi-channel six channels and I'm adding six tracks assignment on one and two is one and two, three and four I'm doing this quick I don't need to show this these things again. I thought I uh, had a saved preset for this one but I haven't. Uh, I just need to pan all these over uh, like that. Okay I have my sequence 24 frames per second sequence. Uh, I drag my video source to the sequence that I have modified to 24 frames per second. Q 
keep existing settings because it's an H thesaurus. And I have a uh, 5.1 so run makes embedded into the video file. I'm going to remove that. All right, next thing to do is to do something about the audio. Here is my audio files. These audio files are for my original video source. This one, the 23.976 FPS video source. Uh, we need to make a time stretch on these files to fit the 24 frames per second video. I've opened Adobe Audition. I just take these six files and drag them over. And here are all my six files. You can see the status. It's creating uh, peak files. Just double click on the file. You can see it's creating the waveform data here. What we are going to do, as I said, we are going to make a time stretch on this one so it fits my 24 frames per second video source. I go to effects, uh, time and pitch, stretch and pitch. So what we are going to do, we are going to make a time stretch and I'm choosing the algorithm for that audition, it's built-in algorithm and here we are going to uh, set the stretch value we need to calculate that one I need to open my calculator alright, here's the calculator we have our video source which is a 23.976 and it is going to be stretched to 24 frames per second and I'm multiplying that to 100 so we get a, a nice percent value 99.9 .9. this is the value I'm going to type in here 99.9 .9. Uh, I'm not going to do a pitch shift on this one because it's I don't think it's necessary but if you like to do that you could do that lock stretch and pitch together uh, this is a just doing a stretch is very very quick so I'm going to do that and I press apply this one is ready to process and now I have double clicked and opened this file and stretch and pitch I'm going to do this on all of these files and this value is remembered so I just hit apply and I need to wait for this to be ready here it is, I go to effect and apply and we need to sit and wait for this waveform data to be created Yeah, and now we're adding the stretch on this one as well first file is ready and you can see that we have a different duration now when the time stretch is applied uh, it differs 5-6 seconds and I will pause the video till it has processed the other files hi I'm back again here we have all the six files with the time stretch applied and with their new duration the other files this is the folder that contains my six files and you can see there are other files here as well it's the peak files that Audition created it holds the, uh, the graphical waveform data that you can see here behind this window you can delete them later, you don't need it uh, what we need to do next is to save the files I have this one, this is a center file, I'm going to make a save Make sure that this file is not your original audio file and the only copy of it because you're going to overwrite it. If it is that, you have to make a save as in that case. I made a, a duplicate of the audio files before I ever imported them to Audition so I can just make save right away. I go to the next audio file, press Command C, Control C on Windows, make the same thing on all the files. Yeah, step ahead. All files are saved and we are done with our stretch. 
I can remove these files, I don't need them here. If you have video with embedded audio, you could just drag the video track right into Audition. And now it's again going to create peak file for my audio. And this video file has uh, six audio tracks. And here you can see all the six files uh, that is embedded in the video file. We can now apply the time stretch to all six tracks in one go. That's pretty neat. And with the time stretch applied, you can save it as one WAV file containing all the six channels, the 5.1 surround mix. Go to File, Save As. When saving a multi channel WAV file, you should, before saving, check the estimate file size. If the file size exceeds 4.2 GB, you are saving the WAV file as a 64 bit WAV file, which means that um, Premiere cannot import 64 bit WAV files. So what to do instead is to right click on this file and extract channels to mono files. I'm doing that. Yeah, now now all files are extracted and you can save each file individually as a mono wave track. Let's uh, jump over to Premiere. We are back in Premiere. Uh, I'm going to import my, my audio files and I can't see them. Okay, here we have my left file and the right file and my center LFE left surround and Sorry, so what you need to do now is that you need to check the sync. You need to really to check that uh, nothing has gone bad when doing the time stretch, that you applied the wrong value or something like that. So you need to do that. When everything is checked and everything looks fine, it's time to export the DCP. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to export the DCP because it's covered in a previous tutorial. Um, I think it's everything for now. Thank you for listening and goodbye.